So one of the things you want to jettison are things that you're not aware of. You got clutter around your house. You got clutter inside your your own house, your internal house, your body. I want to tune in to Facebook. We have a question here from Dave. I am five foot six and 132 pounds, yet I still have a significant amount of belly fat and fat around my face. How do I minimize the excess fat without trying to go stupidly low in actual weight? I can't believe that in my mid 40s, I need to be below 130 pounds. Now, Dr. Sean, I know you'll probably address this a little bit differently. I want to put a few things here on the screen first. First, I want to show image number two here. This is you. And this is a picture of your face at age 48 and then a picture of you at age 59 here. And what we see on the screen is an appreciable difference, a much healthier person on the right side, even though two things, A, you're considerably older in this picture, even though you don't look older in this picture, but also you actually weigh more. And it seems to me what we often do is we are measuring the wrong things. If you want to lose weight, cut off your leg and you'll instantly walk out. Well, I guess you'll hop out of here (laughs) weighing less. But Dr. Sean, talk to me about this image and then also image three. We've got something else where you, uh, we we, we can see an appreciable difference in in how you've changed personally. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, you know, minimizing uh, what what is really uh, important. So the MRI is sort of like this magic looking glass. It allows you to focus and help you make decisions like what you can jettison and what you should be building. So I love the MRI for being able to do that. So one of the things you want to jettison are things that you're not aware of. You got clutter around your house. You got clutter inside your your own house, your internal house, your body, but you don't know about it unless you get scanned to see it. So the MRI allows you to see this very da- dangerous substance, visceral fat. And one of the places it manifests actually is in your face. So it's one of the most noticeable places, but it manifests throughout the body. So uh, right up front, you can see the change in my face where I'm 48. I have a lot of inflammation, even though I weigh less, Uh, During the interval between those two photographs, I jettisoned dangerous inflammatory visceral fat, and you can see it in my face. So I got a leaner face on my image to the right. And then the third image, you can see this profile lateral view. You can see the impact of that visceral fat once it leaves. So interestingly, one of the manifestations of visceral fat is it degrades your muscle performance. So it helps to, first of all, you lose muscle mass. So with a condition called sarcopenia or medical frailty, we start losing our valuable good stuff in our house, you know, your muscle. So that one you want to retain. So when you when you want to have a more minimalist lifestyle, you got to ask what really is important and hold on to that stuff. And what isn't important, you, you become aware you get rid of. So muscle is really good. And it's not just the amount of muscle, but how well it's performing. So in that first image uh, on the left, you can see my belly sticking out because interestingly in that photograph, I don't have much visceral fat, but what I do have is a lot of influence from the former visceral fat that weakened my gut. So the dad bod is really weakness where your muscles in your anterior part of your abdomen can't even hold your guts in. So were you to do um, a surgical procedure and remove that visceral fat right away, your guts still would be pushing out because your muscles can't hold it in. So that second image shows my abdomen has become much flatter. So for the point of the audience listening, you know, really look at what really matters inside of your body. It's not just losing weight. Like Joshua said, you could do that chopping off a particular limb, but you want to jettison the stuff that's harmful to you and hold on the stuff that's beneficial. And so visceral fat is bad fat, but there's also good fat, which is um, subcu- you know, superficial subcutaneous fat. So a little layer of fat uh, just on the outside. We We've seen in studies is very protective. Um, And another good fat is brown adipose tissue. We call it brown fat. And that one comes from cold showers and uh, lifestyle can can help to increase that. So, you know, the the opportunity to educate, you know, the minimalist um, podcast audience and, and have people understand that not all fat is the same. 
not all weight is the same. You know, you maybe you're gaining weight, but you're gaining good tissue. Maybe you're losing weight, but you're losing bad tissue. And that's where the MRI, I think, is so helpful. I think that measurements aren't helpful if we're measuring the wrong thing. If we simply are looking at weight, it doesn't tell me the full picture. Weight of what? Because you, I first heard about you from, we were talking about Dr. Anthony Chafee. And uh, I guess on certain body mass indexes, he might be considered obese because we're measuring it the wrong way. Now, he probably has 8% body fat or and he's a really big athletic guy. But if you just measure weight, it's not really telling you the full picture. Yeah, that is such a great uh, point. And so, you know, one of the things that uh, is impressive about, uh, there are many things impressive about our country is uh, uh, American commerce and uh, Maybe we could uh, get into that. That's really interesting. It's a good analogy for biology to understand in medical health what's going on in, in corporate America. I'd love to get back to Dave's question here directly. So what he's saying here is, hey, look, I weigh 132 pounds, and I can't believe that in my mid-40s, I need to be below 130 pounds. And the fascinating thing is I see a lot of people in their 30s and 40s when their their bodies start to change in interesting ways. It's many years of, of accumulating visceral fat. And now all of a sudden I feel like, oh, I, I, I'm like him. He's like, I've even though I'm within this healthy limit, I have a fat face or I have a protruding stomach. And you see that in your images that you've shown here. But you've also shown that it's reversible. Up on the screen here, we have this picture of Dr. Sean. I hope I can look that great tomorrow (laughs) at age 42. But holy moly, man. Um, So this is you, I guess, a couple years ago, approaching age 60 at that point and look like a 21-year-old athlete. But the good news is you didn't always look like this way. You didn't always walk around looking like Michael Phelps, and that's clear in the previous picture here. So maybe we can give Dave some hope here. Yeah, so one of the things I would tell Dave to do as my favorite form of exercise is uh, is what we've done ancestral, ancestrally for 4 million years. The two things that kept <clears throat> our, uh, keep, kept individuals in the species the longest and also equated to the best quality of life were two things, and that is fighting and sprinting. But fighting is something hard to really advocate as a physician. You know, I, we joked within my, our, our startup that we can have clients go to a bar and, and get in a fight and actually help to optimize them. But uh, <laughs> we, we stayed away from that, and you can exercise in a very intense manner. But the second thing is something every you know everybody listening could consider doing, that is sprinting. So sprinting, when you think about it, is a perfect minimalist activity. So instead of doing the more maximal kind of activity where you're doing long distance running, I started embracing the age of 48 sprinting. And so sprinting will help Dave and anybody listening uh, that's in their 30s and 40s uh, who wants to jettison some some of this excess uh, lifestyle that they've accumulated, excess bad fat, uh, visceral fat. If you sprint, that will help in the fastest and the easiest. And the reason is, when you sprint, it releases a, a messaging molecule called myokines and another uh, messaging molecule called LACFI, which is a combination between lactate and phenylalanine. And I hope that's the last time I have to say that because that's a tough <laughs> word. But LACFI is the easiest, easier way to, to express it. And interestingly, they looked at a study, 10 different forms of exercise, and they studied these different forms of exercise for which produces the most LACFI. And right at the top, was sprinting. The next one below it was weightlifting resistance training. And at the bottom of the 10 forms of exercise was distance running. Running. So sprinting seconds of maximum intensity exercise is really the key for Dave and other people that want to burn bad fat and at the same time build muscle. So nothing burns more fat, bad fat, and nothing puts on more beneficial, uh, you know, minimalist type of muscle uh, than sprinting. I hope you enjoyed that highlight from the Minimalist Private Podcast. If you did and you'd like to dive deep into full episodes of the Private Podcast, head on over to Patreon. Just click the link down in the description. The Private Podcast keeps our YouTube channel 100% advertisement free because advertisements suck. But if you're not ready for that just yet, head on over to this video. 
on our YouTube channel.